Hi, and welcome to another week, another edition of the Public Interest Technology Colloquium. My name is Katina Michael. I'm the director uh, of the Society Policy Engineering Collective at Arizona State University. I'm also a professor in the School for the Future of Innovation in Society and the School of Computing and Augmented Intelligence. And today, it's my absolute honor to have three wonderful women presenting at our colloquium. Rebecca Herald, known as the Privacy Professor, Rhys Farthing of Reset Tech Australia, and Emma Fro of SFIS at Arizona State University. Our first 30 minutes will be covered by Rebecca Herald on the theme of IoT security and privacy at home, keeping the digital spies out. Rebecca has 25 plus years in the IT sector, systems engineering and information security and privacy. She's well known across the world for her consulting work at Simbus and also for her information security work and assurance work for cloud services, especially within the health sector. Rebecca has authored about 19 books, which is really unbelievable, but we'll talk about a few of them perhaps in, in passing in a moment and contributed to hundreds of other books and articles, including our own volumes with MG Michael. Amazingly, uh, in a seven year block period, Rebecca led the NIST Smart Grid Privacy Subgroup as co-founder of IEEE P1912 and was on many advisory boards. Rebecca is also an adjunct at Norwich University in the MSISA program for nine years previously and has received numerous awards and keynoted on five continents. She's also appeared on many morning shows and now has her own podcast called The Data Security and Privacy with the Privacy Professor. This is a bit of a suite of uh, things you might find if Googling uh, Rebecca online, the podcast, you know, tune in on a weekly basis, uh, log in and uh, submit to her weekly tips uh, and strategies to keep your uh, cybersecurity positive and also your privacy. And as I mentioned, so many different talks, this is just indicative of 2019 uh, across the country in the US and beyond. And, you know, when you've got PwC holding up Cybersecurity Day and inviting you to a panel of that day, uh, we know that the kind of person we're about to hear. Please log on to her Google Scholars uh, page. You can download some of her books and also some of her work. Uh, a, a prolific writer and speaker. And this particular book, Managing an Information Security and Privacy Awareness and Training Program, seems to have been not only downloaded thousands of times, but also cited into the hundreds. I'm going to stop sharing and invite uh, Rebecca Herald. Thank you so very much, Katina. I'm really happy to join you from Des Moines, Iowa today. Let me get my uh, screen share going here and hopefully you can see my uh, screen now. Yes, um, wonderful. Well, I'm so happy to join you again. And I've seen such great information about what you've been doing with the colloquium events. And I know the amount of time and effort and planning and leadership it takes to put them on. So congratulations and kudos to you and your team. And also for your um, folks who are also attending, you know, Dr. Michael has been on my radio show a couple of times. So check check out those sessions. Uh, they were really well received. And of course, uh, Katina really gave us so much great information. So today I'm going to be talking about the Internet of Things or IoT for short. Uh, those devices are really becoming ubiquitous. IoT things are also referenced as smart things, right? Smart watches, smart cars, smart refrigerators, smart shoes even. And there's an unlimited number of other types of smart things. Now for my presentation day, I'm going to go through this really quick because there's I, I'm just passionate about this topic and there's so much to cover. But uh, I do 
do want to get into some of these and give you some good examples. So, you know, collecting um, information is what those IoT smart things really do. And for the purpose of my presentation, an IoT device is any device that has the ability to digitally interact with the environment in some way. You know, it could be collecting, it could be deriving, it could be sharing, processing, storing any combination of these activities uh, for images, for audio, for video, for data of any other type, in addition to its primary function for whatever that thing is. Various research groups estimate that there are currently close to 20 billion business manufactured smart devices worldwide right, uh, right now. And of course, people can make their own uh, smart devices as well. Uh, estimates vary greatly, but there's also estimated to be anywhere between 70 billion to 200 billion smart devices by 2026. And just consider this, each of these devices interacts with and often are supported by computers and you know, cloud services and apps and Wi-Fi routers and controllers and gateways and hubs. It truly is really mind boggling that it means that with all of those IoT devices and all those other components and computing devices, it results in a, a rough estimate of around 500 billion total computing devices currently that are interacting with IoT devices. Now that's a lot of devices to secure. That's a lot of data to safeguard and control. And my focus today is on the smart home. But of course, there are many locations outside of the smart home that I, I will mention if there's time at the end of my talk. I'm gonna use this infographic. And this is one that my privacy and security Brainiacs team created to reference specific types of IoT devices. So I have the link shown on the, the site here. Just go ahead and jot this link down to refresh your memory about the security and privacy points that I make after my talk, along with getting to my site where we have three free online digital flipbooks or ebooks that my team also made. And we made these to raise awareness of IoT risk because of all those IoT devices that everyone basically is now using. So now let's go ahead and I want to consider some of the common smart home security and privacy risks. So let's start with Wi-Fi routers. Uh, with Wi-Fi routers, of course, unauthorized access can occur into home networks through poorly secured Wi-Fi routers. Who has their Wi-Fi routers really well secured? A lot of people don't. And the access can also get in to those Wi-Fi networks through the IoT devices that are attached to the Wi-Fi network. So after getting into the home network, the cyber crooks, the hackers, the malicious IoT botnets, um, just snoops who wanna see what you have on your network, they can access the data in the computers and the IoT devices uh, within that network. And they can also take that connection and go to the other networks that connect to the home network. What would these be like? Well, if you work from home, that would be to your employer's network. If you do online banking, they might be able to get into your bank account if you're connected at that point in time to other online sites and so on. And once there, they can steal data, they can load malware and spyware, they can make modifications to files, they can track your activities and whereabouts by putting spyware on not only your Wi-Fi network, but also those IoT devices, especially if those IoT devices are mobile. And they can do a lot of other nasty activities if there is insufficient security. A research group, consider this, they set up a smart home and they use the defaults that came on the Wi-Fi router and a wide range of the IoT devices that they were doing their testing with. And they wanted to see how many hacking attempts would be made against the smart home network after it went online. Well, in the first week after going online, more than 12,000 hacking attempts had been made to that 
Wi-Fi network and to those IoT devices. Many of these attempts were successful, including stealing data and planning botnets. Planning botnets is one of the most common things right now being done with all those IoT devices. Uh, so they can launch attacks elsewhere from them. So some security must haves to protect your IoT and other computing devices and networks that you're using within your home. Certainly use strong authentication to the Wi-Fi router and the network. You know, always change the router's default password and change the service set identifier, the SSID that came on the device. Never use a system that requires only an email address to gain access. There's a lot of them that do this. Use multi-factor authentication as well. And number two, use strong encryption. Use the strongest possible. When you're choosing a router, look for no less than WPA2 advanced encryption standard or AES encryption. Now certainly use WPA3 where it's available. Uh, because it's even stronger. It's not available widely right now. If you see that your router is using WEP or plain old WPA with no number, um, those aren't strong. Don't use that encryption. Don't get that router if that's all they're offering. People will be getting into your network if you use those. Number three, enable automatic software, firmware, and security updates from the manufacturer. You can sign up for these when you're installing your product. You can go to the manufacturer's website to sign up for them there. Or you can call their customer service number. Number four, use a firewall. Use that firewall. Now, most newer routers have firewalls built in. But really, to add more security, install an additional firewall to your smart home network. It will not impact performance if uh, you install it correctly. Also, number five, limit network uh, availability to the IoT devices. So some of you might be thinking, how do we do this? Well, here's a simple way to limit availability. Turn off your Wi-Fi router at night. When you go away from home, turn off your Wi-Fi router. When you are offline during extended periods of time, turn off the network when not in use so that you can limit the extended hack attacks. Um, that is really an effective way to keep people out of your network. Now, some of you might be thinking, yeah, but I have other things on that Wi-Fi network. Okay, well, if you do, then create a separate Wi-Fi network just for your IoT devices, if at all possible. And with most Wi-Fi routers, you can do that. Now, this keeps all of your smart home devices uh, separated from your home computers and all the associated data and videos and photos that are stored on them. So this division really helps you to keep, even if somebody gets into your IoT devices, they can't get to your financial records and to your uh, employer's networks that way. Number seven, make sure that the manufacturer has security and privacy instructions and additional information provided for using their products securely and they should provide customer support. Ask them to do this if they are not already. We have to start holding the manufacturers accountable for telling those who use their products how to use them securely. Now let's go on to the, the controllers and the hubs. So smart home hubs and controllers, they manage the IoT devices in the home or any other type of building or facility. And they're often comprised of hardware controlled, usually by an app on a smartphone. There could be also specific uh, types of controllers. Now weak security on the hubs and controllers can make them discoverable by online crooks or anybody else who wants to discover them. And that can lead to unauthorized settings changes surveillance through the attached devices. This has happened a lot. And it uh, may also allow for malicious and illegal code to be planted on the smart home network. This has also happened a lot. Many hubs and controllers have poor security. For example, a research company recently performed tests and they showed how easily a popular IoT security system, a security system controller, could be accessed by 
hackers simply by using the email address. If all is that is used for access to the controller is an email address, then it's going to allow a lot of people in and it's going to allow the associated devices to be accessed and controlled by those hackers as well. So you need to make sure that you implement the same type of security must-haves that I mentioned before. Do not use public Wi-Fi to get access to those hubs and controllers like those in airports and restaurants to access your smart home network. Instead, connect through your phone telecommunication service. Uh, do not use a hub or controller that requires Telnet. Look in the device documentation to see if this is used. They should show it if it is. Telnet has known security flaws. Instead, use products with more secure protocols, such as SSH, and see if that is in the device documentation as well. Read your documentation. I know a lot of people don't like to, but you need to start doing that with your IoT devices. Number four, use a hub and controller that store the data locally, not in the cloud, if at all possible. Cloud services are complex and typically have a huge number of entities, processes, and devices accessing them, increasing security and privacy risks, and a lot, a, a huge majority of IoT um, breaches and incidents have occurred because of access coming through those cloud services. Number five, keep the controllers and the display screens secured from unauthorized viewing. Uh, require strong authentication to change the settings to the controller. And if the screen can't be hidden and secured through a screensaver uh, type of capability, then keep that controller physically secured so others can't get to it. Now, also the computers. So access to smart home devices, controllers, hubs, and all those other components are often made through connections with computing devices, right? Laptops and tablets and so on that allow the smart home uh, dwellers to access useful reports, settings, and other information about the smart home activity and devices. These connections from computing devices, those create pathways to the IoT devices, the data, and other types of connected networks, such as those businesses that you're connecting to when you're working remotely or your financial sites and so on. Poorly secured connections can allow for many security incidents and privacy invasions. Here's just one of thousands of examples. So there were 20 apps for popular smart devices that allowed cyber um, intruders to intercept data, to modify data, and to change smart home device settings because of poor security in the apps on the computing devices. So you need to make sure that you have anti-malware tools, uh, you need, and, and I'm going to go through these very quickly so I can get to the other ones. I've so much to, to cover here. Use the firewalls again, use VPNs, use strong authentication, always use uh, multi-factor authentication and strongly encrypt those devices. Now I want to get into some very interesting now smart devices. We've talked about the components that support the IoT devices. Those must be secured. Now let's look at the IoT devices themselves. So to make them as beneficial as possible and working as you want them to, they need to be secured. And I'm going to focus on some practical security actions you can take for the many security and privacy incidents that have occurred and will continue to occur. So the connections IoT devices make to the smart home networks, they again can create pathways for the cyber crooks and spies and snoops to get into your network and everything attached to it. Here's just a couple of thousands of real life examples of security problems. And Katina, this is another book that I'm thinking about writing about all these examples of incidents. So in 2017, some of you might've heard about this. There was an IOT aquarium in a Las Vegas casino. It had a smart thermostat within it. And that smart thermostat was hacked by cyber uh, crooks, you know, from some from the other side of the world in Finland. Uh, the cyber criminals saw it online. You can see any IoT device online through the internet if it is not properly secured. The cyber criminals then used that smart 
thermostat as a pathway to get into the casinos, computer systems, and databases. Why? Because that smart thermostat was also attached to the casino network. And that network, uh, once you were on it, you were able to get into all of those files that were in there. The actual hackers and I hate to call them hackers because it's not really that hard to get into a network that's not secured, right? But anyway, those um, cyber crooks from Finland, they ended up stealing 10 gigabytes of confidential data about the high roller gamblers from the casino. And they stored it back in Finland where they continued to use it. Now, here's another example, um, smart toilets. I, this is important because I want to point out how these devices that people would never even dream of being a security threat because of what they do actually can bring security threats to your network. So smart toilets have actually been around since 2011. Now in 2013, one of these smart toilets was hacked and hackers remotely controlled the flushing, the bidet, the hot air blower, and all the other you know, capabilities, ultimately because of the app. We mentioned that earlier, right? The app using it um, to control that smart toilet, it had a hard coded pin. That's the first problem. The second problem was that the pin was the same for all the smart toilets. And the third problem was the pin was zero, 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 zero. Horrible security, horrible, horrible. So, you know, that's bad enough, but it didn't really do anything too bad there. But now in 2021, the harms that can occur through unsecured smart toilets are much, much worse. Why? Because many smart toilets are now prescribed by doctors for patient care, and they do analysis of the deposits into the toilet bowl. And not only that, but the smart toilets take photos, videos, and audio to support patient care. So all of this is sent via wireless communications, stored in clouds, accessible by apps. Access to this information could cause incorrect prescriptions from the doctors uh, taking care of the patient. If that information is you know, modified, it could provide incorrect healthcare prognoses. Again, if that data is modified or deleted or otherwise you know, changed, and there can be many other harms. And of course, another harm is embarrassment right so again i'm talking about smart toilets and smart aquariums because a lot of people don't view those types of devices that seem like they're harmless um, as a threat but they're some of the biggest threats because people don't think of them as threats uh, there's also smart toothbrushes smart bras smart shoes and many other types of things so we need to make sure that we are aware of them there were twice as many iot device hacks and incidents in the first six months of 2021 than there was in the first six months of 2020 uh, and that's because those devices are simply not being um you know, secured. So here's some security must haves for those. Never, ever, ever use default passwords that come with the devices. Change those default passwords. Those passwords should not be hard coded anywhere. Ask the manufacturer about this. Disable the uh, IoT product capabilities you do not need and those that you never use. Why? Well, you need to make sure that um, others the, the uh, cyber crooks who are finding your IoT devices online, they can tell if you're using certain capabilities or not in devices if that device is not appropriately secured. If you're not using a capability and they see that, they're going to use that capability for their own malicious means. Make sure you check the capability settings occasionally and make sure also that auto updates did not re-enable disabled capabilities. Establish strong security settings, turn on uh, encryption, use multi-factor authentication, enable automatic product updates. Here's a very 
effective way to secure IoT devices. Unplug the devices when they are not needed. I actually have an, an Amazon uh, show uh, and I use it for research. Guess what? It's unplugged right now because I'm not using it. I don't need to use it. If it's unplugged, then that is not a connection into my Wi-Fi network that anybody can get into. Uh, take training provided by the manufacturer for how to securely use the device. And if the manufacturer does not offer training, request it. We need to make manufacturers accountable for providing security and privacy controls within their devices. Hold the IoT product manufacturers to their promises too. Read those posted privacy notices and uh, security policies they have, and then ask the manufacturers how they are protecting them. Now I see that I'm getting close to the end here and I wanna leave a little bit of time uh, at the end. So I'm going to go through the next few slides quickly. Katina, I can uh, provide you with a copy of these. And then also if folks go out actually onto my website, I'm gonna post the, these uh, where they can be found too. Uh, the flip books will be the best. Security cameras and entryways. If you go to the site to that link I gave on, um, earlier you can see my infographic there's a lot of information there smart vehicles oh my gosh katina i could talk for a full day about smart vehicles and some of my research that i did personally while driving my youngest son out to the east coast from iowa um, to visit some colleges out there just a few years ago so anyway smart vehicles Utilities meters, uh, as you mentioned, I led the uh, NIST smart grid uh, privacy group for several years. So there's a lot of information there. Um, so again, this infographic along with the numbers, this shows how it will be uh, accessed and so on. Also out on the website, because I know we don't have time to, to go into depth about it. I also talk about how others can get access to your smart home uh, who are located in the neighborhood or also in smart buildings. I talk about that. There's so much to know. I mean, even with, um, you see here the, the farm, uh, I've also lived on a farm and farmed my entire life. So <laughs> while I do high tech stuff, I also do things with agriculture and you would be surprised at how long farmers have been using, for instance, driverless uh, combines and tractors since at least the late 1990s using GPS uh, controls. So there's a lot uh, to go on there, smart roads. Um, I've done work for a smart road manufacturer. Actually, they make smart light poles like you see here. Um, those two little blue things are USB ports. Uh, those create some significant risk. Um, and then also just the fact that if you have an IoT device online and proper security is not there, anybody in the world can find it. Uh, there's a lot of issues there. Oh my gosh, another thing. Do not just throw away or sell on eBay or wherever your um, IoT device that you no longer need to use. Remove all the data first, remove all the apps first. If it's not a device you're going to be making that much money from, just smash it to pieces and then put it out in your garbage. Don't throw it away though without smashing it to pieces and making it unusable because people will take it out of your uh, dumpster or out of the landfill or wherever the garbage dump is. Also make sure there's a lot of important things here too, that the call centers who support those IOT devices have strong um, identity verification. I've also served as an expert witness. I've seen some really horrible things happen from people social engineering their way into people's IOT devices to then track them down where they were hiding from stalkers and then really beating them almost to death in front of a five-year-old girl, for instance. Um, so it's, it's really important to make sure that customer center are there. Uh, these are the common categories. I have just all of those different must-haves throughout that I cover. 
again, you can get to this um, infographic that we created on our website. Um, also, what's really interesting is over the years, I've had a lot of people who aren't from an IT background, as well as those who are, ask me to explain how to secure the devices they use. And so what we started doing for my privacy and security brainiacs um, just a few months ago is creating paperback books that take those flip books we're providing and expanding the information so that they can actually use the book while they're they're also securing their IoT devices and using them. So this is our uh, new book that we have coming out um, in December tomorrow. And here are a few resources. I've also been on uh, the NIST uh, IoT cybersecurity team for the past two years, and we have a lot of new stuff coming out there. There's also other good information from Europe and Australia and Japan and, and all over the world. So remember, if an IoT device or any other type of computing device is ever, ever on a network, including your home network, uh, the Wi-Fi network, anywhere, it's a potential pathway into the network and to all the data and devices that are on that network, even if it's a innocent looking um, fish tank or if it's a toilet in your bathroom. So that's kind of all these different issues <laughs> dumped uh, on you at once. Katina, I don't know if we have time for any questions or not, but I'm happy to take them. These are a few of my books that Katina mentioned. And also I wanted to show my chief security officer there too. That's uh, Jesse, my Doberman. So he's, he's being very silent right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, 